Hi there, today I want to share a little trick how to improve quality of, um, you know, CAD geometries. Here I have this sheet metal part that looks fine, but actually it suffers from, from some, some modeling problems. Uh, basically, if I diagnose this part when it says it's just correct, there is nothing, nothing wrong about this part. Also, if I, for example, I don't know, I check tolerances, then uh, it's also quite okay. Uh, you see that uh, some anomalies might be uh, might be concentrated, that might be centered near like those band reliefs, and uh, this is also totally fine. And basically, there is nothing suspicious about it in the first at the first glance. But if you start to check it closer, then you might identify that there are those like dangling faces near those cutouts. And uh, you see that I cannot like simply go and delete this face from here uh, because if I do that, if I do that, then I uh, obtain some, you know, naked edges. And basically this face, what remains here, is the entire sheet, uh, sheet face uh, on the opposite side. And if I delete this one, then I simply corrupt my model completely. So this is not an option. And I still want to like get rid of this dangling face here and dangling face here. These cutouts are just dirty. Who modeled them? And uh, also, this is not uh, the only problem with those cutouts because this is like a part uh, that is supposed to be, you know, manufactured on a press brake machine, of course, because it's a sheet metal part. And those little cutouts, they are going to be uh, done with laser cutting. And uh, normally, in parts like this, you would expect to have perpendicular cuts. So the angle here should be 90 degrees. And if I check the dihedral angle, then I see it's not actually 90 degrees, it's uh, something, something else. It's uh, 86 degrees here, and if I check the opposite side, then uh, here I have... What do I have here? Uh, Alright, yes, it's also like 4 degrees. Uh, greater than uh, I would expect. So basically what I want to do is I want to rebuild those cutouts. I want to reuse their geometry as much as possible, but I do not really want to keep them in my model and instead I want to recut them geometrically so that I do not have uh, those dangling faces here and I don't have this problem with the angle. So I, I want to have just 90 degrees. So, how can I do that? Basically, my first uh, idea was why not to go and use like Fusion 360 for that, which I normally use for many scenarios like this one. But the problem is that I completely lost my account and I could not just log in into it anymore. And I was thinking, okay, why, why not to try to repeat this exercise in analysis it use? After all, are we, uh, are we doing this, direct editor or, or what? So basically, uh, what we can start with is I want to basically to create this cutout as a, a, an explicit solid. For that, I want to take this wire and extrude it to the thickness uh, of this material. And to check the thickness, I can go to the context menu and run this check thickness command. You see that it put the prop it puts a prop point here and it measured the thickness, you see the opposite point here. So this is the thickness uh, segment. And the thickness says is said to be one millimeter, which is pretty expected. So why not to extrude this or extrude this uh, contour here by one millimeter? The only thing is that I do not have this contour, that's why I go and set this face as a variable. Uh, I wanna continue working with this face. Uh, basically, I think I just lost my part, yeah. So this is my variable. And let me store my part in another variable so that I can come back to it in the future. Set as var sheet metal. So now I have my part copied to this SM variable here. And it has all those nice cutouts. But actually, I also want to get rid of those cutouts because I, I want to rebuild them. 
So what I can do now is I can select this face here, then the opposite face here, have a couple of them selected, and then in the context menu I run find isolated. And here I have all my faces, all my cutouts selected, including those dangling faces. And then I just go and press delete on my keyboard. Now I do not have those cutouts anymore, but I still have uh, them kind of virtually in this variable one. You see that those contours are still available here. And now I can store my part, my defeatured part, into this sheet metal variable. There we go. So next, I can go and explore my variable. So let me hide this part, then I explore my variable, and I, I'm looking for all the contours in my variable. I see this wire here, which is an outer wire of my uh, selected face, and then I have the next wire, wire 15 for uh, this cutout, and another uh, wire 24 for this cutout. And basically now I want to use those wires in order to build new solid blocks. So for that I go and make, should I enlarge it by the way, yep, yep, so let's go and make a face, let me call this face face1 and then I pass the wire, wire name is wire15. Now I have this face, it fills this contour. So I'm reusing the contour from the original model because I want to preserve the original geometry of my model as much as possible. And then I go and create another phase F2 for the next wire, which is 24. Now I have these two phases. And I still have somewhere, yeah, I still have my sheet metal part. It's very, very light, so let me yeah, so I can colorize it like this, just for convenience. All right, so now let's try to extrude it. I know that the thickness is one millimeter. Let me set first this face as an active part. All right, and you see that it's uh, dark gray from one side and white uh, light gray um, in another side. It means that basically this face uh, is oriented uh, to this direction. So I can check it if I use the face normals, this is a normal field. And if I compare this normal field with respect to my sheet metal, you see that it sort of uh, goes inside the material. And this is something I wanna, I wanna fix because this is not exactly what I want to have. I want to go and invert this face. And now its uh, orientation is different. So if I check the face normals, you see that they are pointed to the same direction because those errors, they correspond to the, you know, um, geometric normals evaluated over the plane surface and this plane surface was not rebuilt. But what was done actually, this uh, topological orientation of the face was changed to reversed. Now it's reversed, although before it was forward. And now having this um, oriented face, I can go and sweep it in the opposite direction. For that I go like offset shell, saying that I want to extrude it in the negative direction here. And uh, I want to build a solid. So this is my solid. And the property, the good property of this solid is that if I measure the dihedral angle here, it's a perfect 90 degrees. Also, for example, let's measure the dihedral angle here, also 90 degrees. So if I cut this feature from my sheet metal part, then I would expect that everything is just fine with this uh, cutout here. I, I would only need, because it's an active part right now, I would only need to set this uh, feature as a, as a variable, let's call it like block one. And now we can proceed with uh, another phase. So this is a, another phase I have. Again, I set it as an active part. I go and invert this phase. Then I make a solid out of it. And then I store this solid as a block two. And now I have, what do I have now? Now I have these two blocks, block one and block two. I also have the sheet metal part, and now I want to cut uh, those blocks from the sheet metal part. For that, uh, I use bob cut result variable 
R and then I wanna cut uh, from my sheet metal block number one. And this way I obtain the result. You see that now I have this cut out here. And now I can use the same um, result as, an, as a first argument in this bob cut and use block two as a tool to cut. So now I have this uh, new result and uh, now I'm ready to set it as an, as an active part. So this is the final clean model and I can, sure, I can be sure it's clean because it doesn't have any dangling faces. And also if I check those, you know, dihedral angles here, I still have those perfect 90 degrees. Check dihedral angle here, you see it all, it's all fine. So this part can be passed uh, to production basically, you will not have any troubles uh, if you want to process it with, you know, sheet metal uh, processing software, if you want to like, you know, unfold it and measure some properties of it, then it will be working just, just fine. So that's it. This is a kind of a little trick. And basically maybe what I can also do here is I can, you know, load again the original part. So let me, I still have this part as, an, uh, as, an, as a variable, right? So I can uh, just probably keep it here with probably just different color. Let me set like a green color uh, to emphasize that the part is now, is now just fine and then I take the original model once again so let me use the file name I'll come back here and then I just load like step from this file and now I have this original model layered on top of my constructed fixed model let me keep it in a shaded view and let me give it like a red color here. And let's see what's going on, uh, what, what's, what's the difference between those cutouts, the green one and the red one. You see that they almost, they are almost identical. Although I do have this dangling face in the original model. And this uh, green side, this green opposite face here is hidden uh, beneath this red face because when I was, when I fixed this inclined, when I fixed the dihedral angle, when I made this feature prismatic, I actually had to cut some material out of the original feature. So the original feature is a little bit different, but that's okay. That's what I wanted to have. All righty, so that's it. Um, I hope you find it useful. And basically what it means, uh, this whole conversation here is that basically you can use analysis videos to do some low level operations uh, with your CAD models without necessarily using some direct editing software that would cost uh, like a uh, you know, shitload of money. All righty, see you, see you next time.